Greetings, Doom fans, and welcome to another edition of the Collapse Cafe here on the Doomstead Diner. Today, I'm airing part two of my conversation with Van Dweller, a fellow who has been living in his van for the last 50 years, half century of time spent on the road. And he has a lot of experience with many things, many aspects of road living that are worthwhile to understand. We talked in this episode about energy requirements, about your need for heat and power, whether kerosene or propane are appropriate, what your electric needs are, and so forth, and how to best adapt to those necessities while you're on the road. So, without further ado, let's get to the chat with Van Dweller. The kerosene heaters uh, are you know, pretty easy to find. I mean, you can find a typical unit at Walmart or whatever, but I don't see the kerosene lanterns and the kerosene fired stoves. Walmart has kerosene lanterns Mm -hmm. for five bucks. Oh, yeah. I'll have to Um, look around for them. And, uh, yeah, they're in the camping section for $4.95, man. (laughs) Mm. And, I mean, I've got lots of other lights, too, but for ambiance, while you're sitting somewhere just enjoying life, the the kerosene lamp man is it's just so much. It's a mellow, warm light, mm-hmm. and I like that a whole lot better than all the LED lights. And stuff. Now, how uh, you know you say like 14 gallons will last you for perhaps a year when you're using a, a kerosene lantern fill the uh, container or whatever how much does that container take you know is it a you know a pint or something or or a cup i'm gonna guess that and this is a pure guess because i don't know for sure how much it takes Mm -hmm. uh i'm gonna say it might hold a pint Mm -hmm. and that'll last for a month Mm -hmm. you know easy and that's uh, (laughs) that's basically burning it every night right no, not really. I mean, some nights I'll burn it for six or eight hours, but uh, other nights I might not burn it at all. You know, mm-hmm. it just depends on what I'm doing and where I'm at. Since I'm in the city, sometimes street lights are all the light I want. It just depends. Yeah, well, one thing I find for myself is that just my laptop screen by itself provides enough light for me to uh, move around and so forth. And since it's self-lit, I can, you know, do I do all my reading on the net anyway. I hardly read off of paper anymore. So in terms of, you know, other lighting besides my laptop, I don't really need a whole lot. Just, just my laptop, I don't care for. It's too bright and glary. Mm-hmm. There's other light, then it's not as overbearing for me. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that 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 business doesn't bother me too much. So okay, so you your your lighting is coming mainly from kerosene, and your heat is coming mainly from the kerosene. What about uh, refrigeration? Simple simple ice chest, absolutely. Just you know, I've had powered fridges; they're garbage. Never gonna pay for a powered fridge. The powered fridges last two or three years for five or six hundred dollars. Okay. Well, Mm-hmm. They don't have a long life, and I don't care what any of these other idiots say. I've had a bunch of them <laughs> over the years. Mm-hmm. They don't last. None of this stuff likes the vibrations in a vehicle. They're, they want to be sitting somewhere where they ain't getting vibrated all the time is my guess. Even the, even the built-in ones in RVs very rarely last over five years if you're doing any amount of driving. If mm-hmm. you're not driving, they'll last a very, very long time. If you're stationary, like in an RV park or something, they'll last forever. But if you're driving, they just don't last. With the ice chest, hey, 99 cents for a big block of ice, and that'll last for a week. That's $52. Mm-hmm. You can't beat that price-wise. And you don't have to worry about it going out and spoiling all your food. If it spoils all your food, it's your own fault for not putting ice in it. <laughs> right. But you do you do have to, you know, have a regular available 
source of uh, of purchasing that ice. I know for myself when I was in the truck that I used a thermoelectric cooler, and they also don't last forever. But I usually got about a year out of them before right, they sure. gave up the ghost. So there again, I mean, now thermoelectric. Now when you're driving all the time, thermoelectric's good. If you're parked, they draw a lot of juice. Mm-hmm. You know? But if you're driving all the time, they're they're good. And provided that if you're somewhere hot, you're running air conditioning inside. Because if you're not running some kind of air conditioning inside and you're in a really hot environment, they won't get cold enough to keep your food cold. Either right. Because they'll only cool to between 30 and 40 degrees below whatever temperature they're sitting in. And, but if, you know, provided, like I say, you got air conditioning, if you're somewhere hot or you're somewhere where it's not that hot, you know, as long as it's like 70, 75 or under inside your rig, they'll work perfectly fine. Yeah, and I, you know, obviously, you know, when I drive in the rig, I was uh, had the air conditioning on if the temperature was ever high. And uh, nowadays, living up in Alaska, even in midsummer, temperatures rarely go above you know, 75. Thermoelectrics work uh, work pretty well. But the, you know, the, the thermoelectric module itself eventually gives out or the fan on it gives out or something like that. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I, f- I fixed them a couple of times, you know, because a couple of times it was the fan that gave out. They have their limitations. But I, I, I liked them because they gave me independence. I didn't have to find a place to buy ice and so forth, right. you know. So stopped uh, out in the middle. Getting ice was never a problem for me. It's never been a problem for me. If I'm in a, well, usually if I'm in a town, I'm there for, you know, three weeks or more, you know, or two weeks or more at least if I'm somewhere. And the little mom and pop grocery store, any, basically anybody that carries ice, I mean, even 7-Eleven or any of those places, if they don't have the block ice, they'll get it. Mm. You know, if you're, if you're traveling and you're only doing one stop, then the block ice can be harder to find. However, almost every convenience store that's got an ice machine out front has the block ice if you ask for it they just don't have it in the cooler inside i see so now in terms of how much space inside the cooler the block takes up versus how much space that you have available for food how much food can you keep in the cooler that you're using you know how much storage space is there for your leftovers and whatever okay my coolers are 40 quarts and the way I do it, I have a five-gallon cube-style water container that I cut the top off from, and the ice goes in there. Okay, it takes up basically half of a 40 quart. Mm-hmm. The ice goes in there. That way, you never get water in your food. Right, right. It's all melting inside of the jug. Right. So, and, and you can and I, dump that ice. out periodically, I imagine. Right. And the ice lasts a lot longer that way, too. Mm -hmm. My ice lasts, well, I'll have two inches maybe of ice left after a week. And that's with ambient temperatures of what? Whatever. Really? Doesn't matter. Doesn't doesn't matter. It can be 110 outside. Doesn't doesn't seem to make a lot of difference. I mean, I grant it. I do, if I'm somewhere where it's hot, okay, I have a couple of moving blankets, Mm -hmm. and I will basically gift wrap my cooler in a moving blanket if it's really hot out. Right, right, extra insulation. Yeah, and that seems to solve the problem, you know, where it doesn't, doesn't really matter how hot it is for using more ice. So does your, does your van have air conditioning as well? No air conditioning. No, no air conditioning in mine. And now what about electrics? Uh, do you go with any solar panels or do you just depend on your your Absolutely. alternator? Absolutely no solar panels. I had nothing but problems with solar panels. The whole idea of solar panels to me is just about as stupid as it comes. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to park in the sun in the summer for power. I mean, that just ain't going to happen. And in the winter, when it's cloudy so much in many places and the solar ain't working, you know, I don't feel like going without power anytime. <laughs> you know, 
and I and I don't feel like parking in the sun in the summer to have power either. So yeah, I got a single house battery, hundred amp hour, and I charge it while driving. I plug it into the cigarette lighter, mm-hmm. charge it while driving. I do not have a in the van I'm driving at the moment. I've got three camper vans actually. I've got a cabin in New Mexico. So you have I, you have property to keep your stuff on. Right. So anyway, in two of them, they have the regular solenoid isolator for the to charge the battery while driving. This van does not, and I just have a jumper cable that's basically got a cigarette lighter plug on each end that I plug into my house battery and then plug into the dash when I'm driving. Right. Yeah, I've done I've done that arrangement myself. Keeps it charged up perfectly fine. I mean. I don't worry about greed, garbage by self-proclaimed experts like Stern Wake on cheap RV living and, and self-proclaimed experts on other places that go into a whole lot of garbage. And you know what? Nobody needs to or should care about any of that junk. You know, all you need to worry about is whether you got power or not when you want it. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's the bottom line. And and how much how much exactly do you need? What's your expenditure of power? I think you know the 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 mistake a lot of people make is to try to live like you would live in a suburban a McMansion in your van with all the same electric devices, all just uh, tons of power consumption. Once you cut your power consumption down to the bone, and which you've obviously done gotten rid of the refrigerator and using just ice and lighting with kerosene and so forth. Yeah, I and, mean, you, yeah, you're just got, you're just not using a whole lot of juice. Right. My, uh, my other lanterns, my LED lanterns, have their own solar panel on them. They also have a hand crank to charge them. Right. I have a couple. Uh, they don't need, you know, I just leave them where they get the sun in the window and they're they're always charged use them biggest power consumption would be my laptop then i you know i have fan i have 12 volt air conditioning i have 12 volt heat electric blanket 12 volt heated seat cushion 12 volt razor Um, 12 volt razors really yeah just plug it into the cigarette lighter and you're good to go you know Mm -hmm. uh it is a rechargeable one but i really don't use it that way okay that does it for part two of the conversation with Van Dweller. And we'll be back with a part three in a week or two weeks or whenever. We have other audio and other video that is coming out, so I'm not exactly sure when the next episode will air. But I'd like to thank again Van Dweller for his participation in this podcast or podcasts. Also, would like to invite you guys to participate in our terrorism survey, which is currently up on the diner and could use a few more people contributing their thoughts on where the terrorism situation is going. And that's all the doom. This time until next time here on the Doomstead Diner.